Hello again everyone, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel today. We're going to do a special uh, oil painting today. I'm glad you're joining us for this live uh, broadcast. Um, I'm going to try to do a uh, sort of a tribute to Bob Ross. I don't know how many of you know, but uh, 36 years ago this month he started his painting uh, series on PBS stations and uh, it got a lot of people painting. It even got me interested about some time later, uh, but uh, I think his first uh, his first one was in like 1983 and uh, he uh, started on a PBS station uh, making his broadcast, uh, getting the video taped and uh, so the rest is history. Uh, there's a sort of a renewed uh, interest in Bob Ross today. I want to talk to you a minute. I'll go over to the computer and show you a couple of sites that are, are happening. Uh, but today we're going to do uh, everything with the Bob Ross tools, uh, Bob Ross paints, Bob Ross palette. Uh, I have a composition I've sort of put together. I just have a uh, little thumbnail sketch up here you can see. Um, it's going to be a, comp a composite of several different of Bob Ross type paintings. Um, so rather than copy something specific, I'm going to kind of do a little more on my own here. Um, and we're painting on a 16 by 20 white canvas today instead of my usual gray gesso canvas. And I also have it covered with liquid white. So uh, what you see here on my palette, you see the paints. I have them uh, arrayed on the traditional Bob Ross uh, palette that he used. He would always, you always see him with, using that. And uh, so I have liquid white here and I have liquid black in my, uh, uh, my, my pan here. And I've already put the liquid white on. So this canvas is all covered with liquid white. So uh, I want to go over to the computer and talk to you a few minutes and tell you a little bit about Bob Ross's style and, uh, and uh, how he does the things he does, if you haven't ever watched him and don't know. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I'll be right back. Just hold, hold on. I'll be right back. <clears throat> if you go to YouTube and just uh, put in Bob Ross in the search, you'll go right to his, pa his page um, and you'll see there are... Uh, there's a full one hour documentary here on his life um, and there's several other tributes here from uh, Phil Donahue, Jane Seymour, Duff Goldman and Brad Paisley, all of whom have had uh, interactions with Bob Ross in one way or another. Uh, but you see below here there are all these episodes, they're all arranged in order by season. Um, there are 31 seasons, each one having 13 episodes. Um, and so that's the, uh, the Bob Ross uh, page on Facebook, on uh, I'm sorry, on uh, YouTube. Then if we look at Facebook, there's a Bob Ross Appreciation Society, B-R-A-S for short. Um, I joined that the other day. It's a closed group, but there's about uh, almost 8,000 members right now, 7860 members it says right here. And uh, so uh, you have to answer a few questions and uh, they let, let you in. I've just been kind of impressed with some of the photo the paintings that I've seen uh, show up out here and I thought that I would try this uh, sort of a tribute to Bob Ross and uh, and see how it comes out today. So uh, let me go back now and put in my uh, some of my supplies and stuff that I uh, am going to be using today. You saw a little bit of my paints are already on the palette there. Um, you see here I have uh, uh, liquid white and I have a range of brushes. Uh, these brushes are ones that I've used because I taught the Bob Ross painting style in a community I lived in and for about seven or eight years and uh, so I had a lot of extra brushes. I would bring them to class and people needed a brush I would uh, sell it to them and uh, so I had a, a lot of students that f sort of followed me for almost eight years while I lived in that community but one thing that I always explained to people was is that Bob Ross painted his paintings like this. And a lot of people paint their paintings like this, but uh, I sort of made a little illustration here that you can see, hopefully, um, that shows the, it's sort of a background, middle ground, and foreground. And on the background, he always started with uh, typically liquid white, covered the whole canvas. And then he would start and paint what's called back to front, top to bottom. You may have heard me use that term before. Um, and so you paint the things as farthest in the distance, like you paint the sun first, and then you'll paint the sky, and then you'll paint clouds. So you're always building the painting from the back, farthest distance, 
toward yourself. So that you paint those things in the, in the background, paint distant mountains or distant trees, and then you move to the next layer. And when you get to that layer, you're painting the closer trees, closer mountains, uh, um, some water reflections maybe, uh, that type of thing, uh, and start painting some land. And then as you get that layer finished, you paint the final layer, which is the foreground items. This is where you have your big trees and uh, big, big foreground objects, maybe rocks, maybe another water pond or something, maybe some buildings and some finer details. And they always get, the paint always gets darker usually as you come from back to front because in a landscape, that's really what happens. Um, so anyway, that's the idea of the painting. You'll see me do that. I won't be talking about that a lot, but basically we'll be painting in layers moving from the liquid white stage all the way up to the final painting. And then you see there's no normal, no uh, sketch available here, which I normally try to have sketches available for you so you can see them. Um, but um, anyway, I did this little thumbnail sketch and this is what we're gonna use as a guide for our painting today. So uh, that's really all I wanted to show you and tell you about it. Um, if you have an interest in Bob Ross's paintings, uh, you can go watch him on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, and see some of his work on the Facebook page. And uh, I'll do this. If you guys like it, I may do another one, uh, but uh, I'll let you decide whether you like this style of painting or not. Um, but I'm gonna go back to the easel now and we'll get started on this painting. <clears throat> okay, so you saw that I had my brush here, my big brush, and I've got this thing all covered. It's nice and and slick and it's ready to go. Um, I have this uh, nice long drying, long drying liquid white, um, which takes uh, some time to, to, uh, to dry. Uh, so these things will take quite a while to dry probably. But uh, let me get my uh, camera set up here since I have my controls. Bob Ross always had a nice crew of people around him because he was making videotapes and putting them out for broadcast later. And uh, so they could edit those tapes and, and uh, make them however they needed to. So I'll just use my camera tools here and get myself lined up for you. And uh, I think that's, you can see the whole, the whole page, um, or the whole canvas I, rather, I wanna say. Um, so let's get started. Um, this is gonna have a nice little mood to it. Um, it's gonna start out with, uh, I'm gonna use one of the brushes I have that Bob Ross sells was a filbert brush. And you know I usually use filbert brushes and uh, so we're going to start with this uh, uh, to make a make an orange background here I want to get a uh, I'm going to put the sun in first um, so it's going to be sort of light put a little bit of white in there lighten it up and uh, I want to make this sun I'm going to paint the sun that's the farthest thing the farthest away and it's sort of going to be like right in here um, Try to keep it round if we can. Also, I have a chat window here since this is a live broadcast. Um, if you want to ask me any questions or pose any uh, suggestions or whatever, uh, feel free to do it. Uh, I'll uh, be glad to take your, uh, your questions and try to answer them if I can. Um, but uh, there's our sun. All right, um, so what goes around the sun? We're gonna start with our, um, get this one inch brush. And I wanna get some of these brushes out of the way here. I normally don't have this many brushes on my, uh, on my uh, workstation here. Uh, so we're gonna start with a little bit of this alizarin crimson, pick up some white, maybe a little liquid white to thin it down, make sure that we have a, enough here. Um, and uh, we're going to start and go around this guy here with uh, some of this alizarin crimson and white. Now, I've probably told you before, Bob Ross, when he painted his paintings, he, uh, he did them in uh, something like 26, 27 minutes, he painted a canvas, a large canvas, like uh, 18 by 24 canvas. Uh, and he would do that in, uh, in like 26, 27 minutes. That's really why he had the large, 
the large brushes that he used. Um, so let's start changing this a little bit. Uh, we put a little bit of uh, Van Dyke Brown in this. We're going to start out getting a little more uh, brownish warm color. Since this is going to be a warm sky, we want to make sure we have uh, warm colors in here. So Lizard and Crimson is typically a maybe not as warm as uh, the other red that we have on our palette. Um, I didn't go over the palette colors, I just realized that. However, um, they're the same colors I've always used. Uh, there's only 12 colors in the Bob Ross palette. Uh, and uh, they're titanium white, we have phthalo blue, we have Prussian blue, midnight black, Van Dyke brown, uh, dark sienna, which is what I'm using right here right now, uh, alizarin crimson, and uh, sap green, we have cad yellow, we have yellow ochre, and we have uh, Indian yellow, and we finally have bright red. So that's the colors. Typically I add uh, another color to my mix. Uh, usually uh, I pull out a Grumbacher violet color, ultramarine violet, uh, but uh, you get some of this on here a little faster. This brush, big brush, does a good job painting these skies in. Uh, mix up, I get the, the pink color, the dark sienna, and uh, get this all painted down around the top of the, where the cabin's going to be in here. Our horizon line is going to be just about here, probably. I want to say about right there. Um, so why does this paint, painting system work? Well, it's because you have this underpainting of liquid white, um, and it basically gives you something to, to paint from. Um, and to paint on top of, and it lets it blend and blur and, and, uh, and changes the, uh, the tone of the whole painting. It's a real much, be a much softer painting. Um, okay, I'll put a little darker colors in the corners here and uh, see if that uh, helps darken those down. You typically want your corners to be a little bit darker in a landscape if you can. Um, this down to the horizon line, so we make sure we have this canvas all covered. Um, I want to put, we're going to have some water. I'm going to make this water down here, and I want to have this sky reflecting into this water. I just got all over my fingers because I keep forgetting that I'm painting wet into wet here. Um, this is going to be the, the water and the reflections in the water. Um, so hopefully you can see that. Hopefully it's coming across good. So we want to get this all blended here right away and I'm going to just sort of blend it together as much as I can so that you can't hardly tell where one color lets off and another color picks up. So these kinds of skies are very pleasing and soft and now we got that orange in the middle. If I run this brush right over that orange, you know what's going to happen. It's going to pull that orange out into, out into everything else. And I don't want that to happen. So Let's see if I can get a dry brush here. Let's see how that looks. Step back and take a look. Not too bad. It's giving a nice warm tone to that sky. Um, see here. A dry brush. I got another big brush here. Um, uh, since it's dry, I'm going to sort of come in here and just sort, sort of start blending this together a little bit like this. Makes that sun slightly diffused and it runs the colors together. Uh, 
so that you know there's a sun there, but it's not, not like taking over everything. And then the last little trick that <clears throat> Bob would do is take a little titanium white on his finger and, and put it right in the center of this sun. I get more titanium white than that. Okay, now that's has a lot of paint on there. I've got it kind of pushed into the canvas as much as I can, but it's also bumpy. So the trick to fix that and to make it uh, blend better, you take your knife, you just kind of come in here and very quickly you just go something like that, except you got to hit the canvas there like that. So it just lightened up that center just a little. We might want to hit it just again a little bit to uh, make sure that it's good and white. And then use our knife and give it a scraping again. Like that. Okay, and then come back with our big brush, dry brush, and sort of blend everything together so we don't have any marks in there. All right. So hopefully that looks like that's sort of a ring around the sun and it's uh, putting a nice glow on this, this, this landscape. All right, so I've used a big two inch brush. I've used a one inch brush. I've used this uh, number six filbert to do what I've done here. And uh, it's been done in uh, just 15 minutes or so. So that's probably half the painting right there. All right, let's, uh, what are we going to do next? Um, since this is a snow painting, we have a lot of snow um, in here. One of the favorite brushes to use for snow painting for me is this big old fan brush. Um, I've got about four of them here. I've got, or five of them actually. i got uh, these um, number, that's a big one, the number six, and then there's a, a number, uh, was it number three, I think it is. Um, and uh, so we're gonna kind of just start coming in here with some of this snow. It needs to be lighter than that, whiter than that. I'm gonna get some snow back in here. I need to go ahead and put those trees. I got trees that are gonna go behind this um, cabin. And typically we put those trees in first and then paint the cabin over it. Um, so I just want to get in, load in some snow here so I can make sure where I'm going with this. So I don't have uh, uh, any confusion. Since we don't have a drawing on this canvas, um, we want to make sure we know where we're going here. So I just put a little tint, a little phthalo blue in with this uh, liquid, uh, with this uh, titanium white, with a touch of liquid white in it to uh, make sure that it flows. And we'll just get it laid in here. These are all the snow areas. I'm going to have some shadows from the, the uh, blue. And uh, I'll get a layer on here and let it uh, that be percolating. All right, even over here we're going to have some more snow. So I'll just throw this in, empty out the brush on it. Uh, okay, now time to do some trees. We're going to uh, um, put in some big pine trees. Um, we're going to have this cabin is going to set here uh, and I want to put the pine trees in first before I put the uh, the cabin in. So let's uh, get some dark here. I'm going to use my midnight black, my uh, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, lizarin. Really get a good dark color out of this. Uh, and even put a little bit of that Prussian blue in there. We'll get a really good dark. Okay, so 
What we want to do here now is put in some big old trees. We got some. Put in. This is the technique for putting in big pine trees. Need to have more paint, more dark. These bigger brushes, this bigger canvas uses more paint. So let's just put in several big trees here back behind back behind this uh, cabin. And you've heard me talk about these before. You know, typically these trees sort of all run together. It really doesn't make a whole lot of difference what's in the inside down here in this area, as long as what's on the edge looks like looks like pine trees. That's what the viewer will think this is. Uh, so I'm putting in just globs of trees, and then I'm going to come back here and on the top I'm going to put in this these little trunks. And, Touch them up up there. Another one here. Uh, there is a couple more over here. Okay, so I'm just kind of working my way down the canvas with these dark, dark colors. Dark uh, Prussian blue, midnight black, Van Dyke brown, and and uh, come down here. Let's put in a few more. There may be even some that are a little closer. Uh, you can see them like this. Uh, there might even be one or two out this way. Okay, so um, let's see how this looks um, over here. So you just kind of use the corner of this brush and just make these little things like that, and you all of a sudden you have pine trees out here. Okay. Um, down here we need some more. I'm going to put in some grassy things down here that have some uh, uh, turned up like this. Um, put a little more of my brown in there in some areas. And uh, so we just have a nice batch of really dark stuff going on back here. All right. Um, hold on that brush for a little bit. Let's get our one of our. Uh, script liner brushes and uh, we get a little thinner on it. I haven't washed out any brushes yet. Hello Susan, Lindy, welcome. Hope you like this. We're trying something different today. Um, I haven't done a Bob Ross painting for many years or this style actually. Uh, I used to teach this when I was in, I taught it for many years in the previous community I used to live in and uh, I had about 50, 60 students that followed me and took my classes regularly, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, I thought, since there's a renewed interest in Bob Ross and his his uh, his painting style, that it might be time to do a, uh, a little appreciation painting because uh, it is 36 years since he did this, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, amazing how long. His style has hung on, and the paints and the brushes, all this stuff. You can buy all this stuff, um, and uh, it's still uh, still going on after all these years. Uh, and uh, the documentary, if you go to his uh, YouTube page and look at that, you'll see what uh, kind of what what he went through to kind of get his uh, self-established and how he did it. It's uh, Pretty good documentary, I think. Um, let's see. I want to put some more trees. Um, got some more over here. I'm using all pine trees here. We could put in some other kind of trees that uh, would uh, would work as well. Um, 
Matter of fact, let me show you that little technique. There's a uh, this round brush. We have a so Bob Ross has a big round brush, um, and this thing has uh, some interesting shapes it creates. Uh, so let's try a little bit of that, and uh, I'll show you the kind of bushes and stuff we can create with it here. Okay, so I'm just making another line of trees and bushes here out of with using this this round brush uh, and uh, using dark sienna, a little bit of uh, Van Dyke brown, and you can put these trees in. And as you go up, because this has this uh, liquid white underneath it, it they'll get lighter. If you start really at the bottom, you start at the bottom and go up. Uh, they'll get lighter as you go up. And that nice little, uh, I don't know what you call it, just those spindly type tops on those as they would be if they're like trees that are uh, um, put just a few more in here to sort of make that so it's not quite so distinct. Put a few more on the other side to uh, sort of soften it. This looks too mechanic mechanical here. It just looks like there's uh, I want to make that slightly less specific, a little bit more abstract, a little bit uh, less. So that's using the big old round brush uh, to get some of these trees and bushes and stuff in here. Um, we could actually put some across the other side. Uh, over here, we're going to have a big pine trees and stuff over here, but I might as well put some of these in back here as well. And uh, just let it sort of flow together back there in the far background. Okay. So oh, you see I've left an area here for a cabin. Uh, we've got area down here. We're going to have some more of these types of bushes and that sort of thing. Um, so this isn't exactly the way Bob Ross would do it, but certainly uh, very close. Yeah, Lindy, these colors are great. These, these pinks and uh, reds, oranges. That's a, a great sky color for a winter scene because it makes it very, very warm and uh, makes you feel like you're, if you get in that cabin, you might be really have a nice warm place as long as we have a fire going on in there. Okay, um, that's enough of that right now. Let's go back and see if we can put in a few uh, more trunk-like things in some of these, tr these bushes and stuff back here. Um, Put in a few, oops, that's not very dark, is it? Get me some more, I'm using some liquid black now. Uh, and since it's liquid black, it will lie on top of whatever's there because it's thinner. When you paint this a la prima style, a thin paint will stick over the top of a thicker paint. Um, so uh, if you need to get your paint to stick, just thin it down with thinner or uh, something like that and it will it will stick and adhere. So I'm just filling in some of the gaps here with some vertical uh, things that help kind of show what's going on in that background there. I may paint over some of these things, I don't know, but uh, um, anyway it, it sort of kind of completes that a little bit better back there. All right. Okay, so there's that. All right, now we're going to start coming forward here, uh, bringing this um, snow down. And I want to have mostly white, uh, but I want to try to put in some darker color. You can kind of take this and pull it. Look how this works. Just kind of pull that dark color right down, and it basically helps identify the land that you're modeling. We're actually making this look like it's snow laying on the side of a hill because this is going to be all water down here. So I want this to look like it's all flowing down into a, a creek or a stream or a pond of some sort. Um, and that's what this is doing for us. It's basically letting this all go that way. And those, and those little dark, those subtle dark 
shadows in there basically tell you that's what's happening. So, and by just pulling them out of the trees, you basically get that automatically. That's the wrong angle, okay. Um, oh yes, there's going to be a chimney. Definitely I left, left room for that. Um, I've got a little area right here where I think I'm going to put that chimney, put some white smoke coming out of it. So, didn't forget the chimney, Lindy. I'm going to put it in there. Can't have a warm cabin in the middle of a snow area like this without having a chimney on top of it. I mean, for sure. All right, let's just leave that for a while now. So you're seeing the, the brush strokes are telling you what's happening back here. You got this valley and this water's running down in that area. Okay, so I'll hold on that big brush for a while. My next step is going to be to get out my uh, palette knife and we're going to go in here and start making this cabin. All right, so use this big number five palette knife um, and I'm going to get some black and brown Midnight Black, um, a little bit of the uh, Van Dyke Brown, and see if I can get this cabin started in the right place here, like right here. I want this to go like this, up like that. Hmm, let's see, that's just about right. Um, You see, I'm not doing this nearly as fast as Bob Ross did. He'd have this whole painting done by now. Um, so let's pull this down. Take some more, pull it down this way. Okay. You're starting to see the cabin up here. More here. Try to keep this point up here if we can. About a 90 degree angle. I'm talking about 90 degrees right here. So we have this stuff going on like this. All right. Um, side is going to have uh, put it in here like this, like that. Uh, right back into that woods. Okay, that looks like a cabin, doesn't it? Okay, um, got to have snow on the roof. Uh, we're going to have a chimney there. So I don't want to uh, mess that up. I'm um, going to try to get just a little of this uh, texture in here, a little bit of this, a uh, little bit of white and some of this brown. And as you know, we get a little bead of paint on this knife and then you just come in and run it down like this. That just helps put some other texture in it. It makes it look like old barn wood, old cabin wood or something. Um, and then of course using our liquid, our Midnight black, we're going to put us a big door right in here. Except you got to put some paint on it. I didn't let enough paint come off the knife. Something like this. Can't even see that, really, can you? We'll fix that. I'll put some more paint on there. Okay, now that. Then on top of that, we want to put just a little bit of the. Uh, um, put a little bit of an outline around it. Uh, I would watch Bob Ross paint with his knife. He'd take this knife, put a little bit of white on the bottom of that, like that on the edge, and then he would just do this. Outline that little door. Uh, pick up a little bit of the blue over here that I had used in the snow. And a nice little roll of paint on it. And put the window right here that. Um, and then, if we can put some white around that or not, let's see.
he did this so fast it was unbelievable okay at least it looks like there's a window there um, and then what do we need on the roof we need snow all right I'm gonna pick up some liquid white and titanium white thin it down so I got a nice um, Mm. I need to step back and look at this for a minute and uh, get myself a drink of water. I'm uh, having some hand cramping going on here. Sorry. All right, let's get this knife again. All right, we're going to put some, put some snow on that roof, like right here. Little bit of dirt on the top of that cabin but that's not too bad um, because I didn't clean my knife off see if I clean my knife off before I put that second stroke of paint on there could have there we go still got some of that dark in there it's all right Um, we want to have some of that dark or this snow on this edge too over here like that because we have had a little snowstorm here all right uh, leave it a little rough that's okay snow might be hanging around like that all right um so now we've got our cabin pretty well there with the exception of, as Lindy reminded me, don't forget the chimney. So let's put that chimney in there right now. I'm going to get myself some red, bright red. I'm going to put ourselves a, a chimney right here. Add some dark to that, get some, a uh, little bit of my... Uh, Dark Sienna. Something like that. Okay. Um, leave the dirt on the roof. Good idea. That's what I thought. It would certainly have dirt on the roof for sure, right? Um, now, I don't know if I can... I'm going to do this exactly thinking about my smoke coming out of that chimney if I don't put that in now I'm going to forget it but I'm going to put, put something in here like this that just sort of goes off into the into the background pick up a little more of my liquid white and just make sure that sort of stands out um, Make sure you see that. All right, now, the, uh, the back side of this chimney should be a little bit darker, maybe, since it's out of the light. So I'll put a little more dark right there. All right, let's stop with that and uh, leave it. A glow of a lamp in the window. Boy, you're really putting pressure on me today, Lindy. Oh, let's see. How about some cad yellow with liquid white? Like right in here, we'll just, it's not very yellow, is it? Need to get a little more yellow in there. Okay. Can't quite see that, can you? Brighten it up a little bit more here. We'll make it put a little more on there. Does that look like that well, looks like bright yellow here to me, but I'm don't think it looks that way on what you're watching necessarily. May not be coming across too well in the the TV version of this. It's there, Lindy. All right, so now we're ready to move down 
start doing a little more snow sculpting. Uh, Going to move down this way, put in some more snow on the uh, side of this cabin here. Um, I don't know if you ever remember watching Bob Ross, he always did something called a cabinectomy where he comes in and kind of wax out a section of this like this and sort of puts the uh, angle to make sure you have the right perspective on there uh, just by scraping paint off. Uh, trying to tell you as many things as I can remember of stuff he did. But we want to have some snow that's sort of kind of build up on this cabin here. So I'm going to pop in some snow and then we're going to pull it down if I can get, a, get enough dirt out of my brush. Uh, needs to be whiter than that. I don't have enough pure titanium white. Get that going here. So. So we're getting a little bit of a reflection here. Um, even have a little bit of this uh, where it comes up. Some of these things have uh, Okay, it's nicely nestled back there in that woods. Yeah. Okay, so we have a cabin. We have a fire going in the fireplace. Smoke coming out the chimney, a lamp in the window. Man, um, one of the things we could do, which I didn't do, was maybe put a little bit of a snow, um, a little bit of snow on these trees before I leave that background totally, but we can kind of pop in just a little bit of white things back here to kind of make it look like there is snow on some of these other trees. I don't know if you can see that that well, um, but it looks a little better here if I put some snow on these things. Um, even these other trees, um, uh, let's see, let me finish off the uh, these trees, put a little snow on them some places so it looks like we've got we've had a snow and there's some snow hanging around um, back in this uh, area here um, I'll pick up some more just titanium white and liquid white together and just sort of pop in a few highlights here that sort of tell you we have some bushes that are kind of covered with snow. Um, while I'm doing that, after I do that, I want to come out here and put just a little bit on some of these trees out here. So it it kind of finishes off the, the idea that we are in a snow scene and it has snowed recently and there's some snow still hanging on these trees and Got it floating around in the area. It's got some bushes here that have some snow on them. Uh, all right. Enough of that, maybe. Okay. Um, what's next? All right. We're getting close to coming down this, this bank here. I wanted to make sure that we have it identified so that uh, that we can uh, see the little path coming out of the door like right in here. I don't want to cover up my snow drifts in there. I want to just sort of give you a little bit of a indication that it's like indented. Um, I need to make it darker blue probably. Yeah, something like this. So it kind of looks like there's a path going there. And then to finish that off, come back and get some more of my white, clear, good white, and just sort of layer over that and come back the other side and layer some over that. So we actually see the snow on the other side here. 
starts to help identify these little ripples and areas that are uh, standing out back there. So we're giving it more definition with putting this clear white on top. Uh, we're coming down to the water down here now, so I want to put wherever I have these blue lines, I want to put some snow over the top of it to kind of make it look like uh, we've got some uh, indentations in that snow and uh, whatever. Okay, so let's just leave it like that. All right, so we're coming down to the water down here now. What's in the water? Well, water has no real color, right? You've heard me say that before. So it either reflects the sky, it reflects the, what's around it, what's in it, what's under it. Um, so in this case, we're gonna, we are reflecting the sky. We already have the sky color down there. Um, so let's um, see if we can get it, put a few reflections of this uh, uh, cabin in there, right? So we wanna do that by taking, I'm gonna use this fan brush, I think get these colors from the cabin on the fan brush and we're going to come down here and just put in some streaks like this that give us the idea that we're reflecting something if you can see that I'm going to have to move my uh, there we go um, okay so it's uh, definitely reflecting what's up above it there and these vertical streaks will tell you that's what's happening um, I need to clean out my brush here get this uh, pinkish color out of this brush and so the way you help make these reflections look even more specific um, I put that dark in there, but I left that dark in my fan brush. Let me get that out and uh, put in. I want to put a few more reflections from that sky coming down um, in here. Getting back into a, some of the other darker colors. Okay, so the technique here is since I put these vertical strokes in the water, it's telling you that that's water that's still, it's not moving very much. Um, and sort of to complete that, this uh, illusion of water, you want to take your brush and sort of give it these horizontal strokes like this, wipe it out, come across like that, wipe your brush out, come across, and just take some of the brush marks out of there so they're not so specific. All right, so now we have a nice reflection, and that looks like that's water reflecting that cabin. That's the idea, anyway. Um, we need to uh, probably put a little color around the bank of this here. We're going to kind of come in and put in a, that's really pretty dark, too dark probably. So let's put in a, a bit of a lighter color and we're going to kind of put in this bank along here that sort of outlines the, uh, the water's edge. I just took a little, my typical little uh, thing that I would use for pulling down and just sort of putting it in here, uh, sliding it sideways. So you now see we have an edge on that snow and I want to put a little snow over the top of that in some areas, so I'll just kind of hit it there if I can. If I can get, keep it from uh, running away with me, I'll leave some areas of snow over the top here. Make it look a little more 
finished off. Okay, so it looks like sort of the edge that you'd see on a, a little lake. Um, and we can even enhance that a little more by just kind of pulling down some of these colors a little bit. Uh, sort of reflecting the bank a little bit, whatever's in that bank. Let's give ourselves those pastel colors. We got the pink and the blue and that sort of thing. And then obviously we got to use a dry brush and go back and re rework that slightly just so that it's not so strong that it takes over. Putting that phthalo blue in there really causes havoc with your paints. It just takes over whatever color it's put in. All right, so that's pretty much all I want to do here. I'll pull it down just a little more and then hit it one more time so it's a little bit. All right, so now we got this other bank over here on this side and we're going to put in a couple of big old trees in here. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to put in uh, as uh, good old Bob Ross would say. I don't know how many of you know when he died. He died early. He was only 52. He died on July 4th, 1995. He was 52 years old. And he had been running his Joy of Painting ser series on PBS for about 12 years. And uh, he made 31, 31 seasons of episodes with 13 episodes in each season and uh, so uh, he really died prematurely and he died of a cancer which is similar to the cancer I have he had lymphoma um, and uh, so I feel kind of connected a little bit to that I'm just picking up some uh, Van Dyke brown and some black here in my brush and when I put it on you notice how it lightens up a lot uh, so we're putting in some big old bushy trees here kind of like we have over there but these are bigger because why they're closer to us so that means we've got to make them a little darker and uh, so let's see here I'm getting the gray, letting them sort of hang over here. See how that, those, what that looks like when you pound that brush? It gives you these nice little things that hang over. It's a really a unique thing that you can't get hardly with any other, any other method. I mean, if I were using my traditional brushes uh, and techniques, um, I would have to use a dry brush and try to just feather that edge a little bit to try to even get close to those but uh, because Bob Ross had to find a way to get his paintings done in in uh, 26 27 minutes he had to come up with these new techniques that would allow him to uh, to do that um, so these big brushes this stamping operation here that we're doing the pounding on the canvas if you will uh, that's what that's what does it uh, so I'm just putting in a mixture of colors here, mostly midnight black in some areas and some uh, let it sort of turn gray because you put that midnight black on and it basically uh, hits with that liquid white that's in underneath and it, it grays it down. Uh, all right, so there. So we've got some bushes here and uh, we've got some bushes. We're going to have to have a little bit of uh, snow on them to be consistent with our our pattern here with our uh, design so we're going to come back and put just a little bit of snow on the edges of those and get this big brush cleaned out glad you're all staying with me I hope you enjoyed this uh, check out that Bob Ross appreciation site on Facebook uh, by Bob Ross appreciation society I should say I should call it uh, 
And uh, if you're a fan of his work, you'd like to see more of this kind of thing, just uh, join up and you'll see a lot of people. I don't know many people are putting uh, videos out there yet. I'm going to put this one out there. I invited those people to uh, tune in and uh, watch me, but I'm going to post it when I get the final video edited and uh, we'll uh, invite them to our channel. Maybe they'll uh, like some of the other paintings that we do here. All right, so I'm just putting in some, stamping in some, a little bit of snow on these trees. <coughs> um, <coughs> get my uh, script liner here. I want to get some more paint thinner out. Put it in there, thin it down. Um, you have to put something in these trees to make them look like trees. So let's put a few things here. I don't want to put in every every branch and every um, tree trunk. I just want to make it look like they're it's really a tree. It's not these are a bunch of trees. It's not just a bunch of bushes hanging up there. Um, all right, so let's put a few things in here like this. All right. Um, all right, so that's a nice little grouping of trees. Ashivi, thank you. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> where are we here? Let's see if I can. Now I'm I'm struggling with whether I should do the uh, typical Bob Ross thing and come back in here and put a big old tree right down through the middle of all this. Since I'm giving you this demonstration trying to mimic a lot of what Bob Ross did in his paintings. I think I might want to do that just to see if I can make it work. Um, along here we need some snow along this bank here to kind of let you know this is the side of the, of the uh, snow bank here. I'm hitting on my there, something like that. Just put a little, put a little uh, paint on your knife and just sort of push it in and pull it up. Push in and pull up. So you push a little, uh, little bit of that paint in the canvas and you pull up and it leaves that very nice uh, edge that uh, makes it look like it's, it's going to be lighter down there because it's maybe sticking up and it's closer to the edge of the water. So. Let's pull up on it. Add a few more things like this. This is rough, rough texture, really fast. That little thing, you just pull it, pull it fast like that, and you get some. It's really hard for you to see that, but uh, that's there. Okay, folks, we've been going about exactly an hour. I could put a big old tree right in here. And uh, what do you say? Anybody interested in that? If so, uh, I'll put a big. Another big pine tree in here with some uh, branches on it. Um, this looks like all this back in here, it looks like it's nice and sort of mysterious. There's a lot of uh, stuff going on back there. Looks like a little dense forest. Um, but you know, Bob Ross wouldn't leave that like that. He would come in and he'd put a great big old tree right down through the middle. I think since I've been going an hour, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'll let this rest and uh, tell you I appreciate you watching. And uh, I'm going to get my name on here somewhere. And uh, we'll call this painting finished. You can try this yourself. It takes a very simple sketch. Um, and you don't have to uh, work very hard for it if you got a couple of the tools that uh, I've shown you here today. It takes me longer to do my name than it does Bob Ross. Okay, folks. I um, need a dead tree in front. Oh, well, I can do that. That's really fast and easy. We can put in a couple of those. Actually, I should have put in some more bushes. Um, like right in here, we can just put in a tree coming up like this. 
something like that put a few more branches on it something like that maybe a couple more little things sticking out the bottom um, I was thinking about putting in some uh, few more bushes like maybe some bushes like this in this area thought about putting some over here like maybe a actually I had that in my drawing I was going to put some some little bushes over here uh, that uh, would be something you might see lying down by the uh, by the uh, river's edge um, or creek or whatever this is um, so I'll just sort of put that in, pull those down, put in some more. These things can be flicked up. There, I'm finishing off a little better. I'd say that's a little better, maybe. Thanks for the suggestion, you guys. Um, when you don't have a rigid uh, photograph or something to follow you can kind of do it very quickly and something like that is probably good enough you just want to make sure where you put something like this in that it's connected to the ground you don't want to have it just look like it's stuck on you don't want to have it look like you glued something on there you want it to be surrounded by debris or something that uh, makes it look like there's uh, something that holds it into the ground all right, um, what else? A few sticks coming out of the bushes on the right? Ah, yes. Okay, Linda, you're gonna have to try this and send me your, send me your example. All right, folks, I think, uh, I think I've probably done enough now. And uh, with that said, I'm going to uh, back up here. And uh, once you give it a try, if you get a chance, uh, and let me know how you do on it because it's uh, kind of a fun painting. Um, I see that blue in the middle when I look at it now. Looks like that's almost too much. Um, it's almost too blue. Uh, it's kind of taking over. That phthalo blue is is uh, kind of bad right there. I put a sort of a big big glob on there, and I didn't mean to get that much of it. Um, but I can fix that up uh, very easily with a few brush strokes like that and another brush stroke that would come across and sort of wipe it out all right folks i'm glad you joined me today and stuck with me um, got brown in this brush a couple more seconds and i'll be signing off here all right still too blue but uh I got a big glob of paint there that I gotta I can't get rid of right there so you see me make mistakes and then you see me figure out how to correct them a little bit maybe pull that white down over the blue maybe that'll help yeah that's a little better all right The blue doesn't reflect anything else in the sky, which is, uh, all right, I'm going to stop. You can uh, give this a try, and uh, hopefully you'll have some fun with it, and uh, enjoy the Bob Ross style, enjoy the, uh, the Facebook page if you join, and uh, check out my Facebook page as well. Uh, and uh, if you like this, share it with some of your friends and uh, tell them that you like my painting style, and uh, maybe I'll get a few more subscribers out of that. Um, and uh, so I'll be doing an oil painting again a third Wednesday of every month this year as, as much as I can um, and I'll be doing a watercolor the fourth Wednesday of every month and there'll be live broadcasts so you can watch those and uh, hope you like both watercolors and oils because uh, I, I like both they're uh, opposite painting styles they're really different um, so it's a it's quite a challenge to make sure that you can do them that way so uh, check out my Facebook page check out my website and uh, this will be posted as soon as I get it edited and uh, 
we'll go from there. So I hope you like it, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.